Hello, and welcome to our show. <laughs> Hey guys, good morning. Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the All Things Mighty Show. <laughs> I'm Mylynn. And I'm Dee Dee. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. It's awesome to have you back with us for episode four. Wow, episode four. We're about to introduce you to our very first guest. It's very exciting. Yes. We are here with a guest. This lovely lady uh, was in the Mickey Mouse Club with us. She was actually mm -hmm. one of three members to start from the very beginning, uh, mm. the, from the pilot all the way, uh, the seven seasons. She was wow. in all seven seasons of the show. Star of stage and screen. TV, film, you name it. Broadway. She's an amazing, multi-talented phenomenon and hilarious to boot, the lovely Lindsay Alley. Woo! Woo! Welcome, Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay. Oh, my gosh. How are you? I'm so good. Just seeing your faces makes me feel I can't like believe I'm we're good. all here together. So you're, good. You're in New York. I'm actually in New Jersey. Okay. Lee thank goodness, I, right? That. <laughs> thank goodness. I know. Thank goodness. Uh, Lee and I, uh, we moved here in the summer of 2019. Okay. Uh, so it was kind of perfect timing. We moved back east uh, to Brooklyn and we were living in Brooklyn for about a year and we just decided that we couldn't hack it in a basement apartment. Oh my God. You were staying with Carrie, weren't you? Were you not? I was staying with, we stayed with Carrie for like a month until we found something. And then, and, and then we were in the neighborhood. We were just right down the street. So I was sort of between Carrie and Alana, which was really nice. Oh, fun. oh that's so and cool. It was, it was so, so nice to just be able to randomly get together and yeah. have a drink. Um, but, you know, after a while, when you're in a basement apartment with, mm -hmm. with a baby, Mm -hmm. It's no joke. So <laughs> you need some sunlight. <laughs> well, we needed light. We needed light, and we needed just a, a little patch of, of grass. And we didn't know anybody in Princeton, and had never spent any time here. But we found this darling house, and and I we kind that. of moved here just in the nick. So right before, yeah, you know, right before everything oh, kind of shut down, right? Wow. Yeah. Well, so Miss Lindsay, <laughs> tell us what you are. Getting ready to do. I know it's been a long time since uh, you've done any performing. So give us an update. Uh, I don't know, truthfully. <laughs> like, I love your honesty. Is, but like what the show <laughs> is going to be, if it scares you a little bit, it's probably the mm -hmm. right thing to do. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's, it's just been a really long time since I've, and even talking about it right now, my, my heart. Gets your is, palpitations. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you get that? <laughs> oh yeah, all the time. But you I, had already you've you've done some performances already after you know post pandemic. You've done some performances. I've done one hosting gig, one. Oh, and you know these mus these muscles sort of atrophy if you don't use them. If you're not absolutely. I mean, if you are not regularly in front of a crowd, that is a muscle that has to be worked. It's so and, true. It is so true. And I thought, well, I don't want to do the same show I've been doing. And I, I'm scared to do like a whole brand new thing. So I'm sort of doing, I'm just dipping my, I'm going into the shallow end with some new material. So I have the safety net of, of like some tried and true stuff yes. and, then some, and then some new songs and some new pandemic stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I'm working on it. I have no idea what it's going to be. I'm not worried one bit. Exactly. Like I'm glad you're not. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You were amazing at MMC 30. Amazing. Our reunion. Amazing. You're so sweet. You're so, so. sweet. Is that, but you know, it, it helps when there are like a thousand wonderful. Right. Fans. Like, 
wanting you to do well, you know? So that, that, you know, the, the, the energy was supportive. I felt great. If I could be in the audience of every performance of yours, I would be. I am such a fan. You are the best. I'm going to call you before this show so you can give me a pep talk. Oh, stop. <laughs> and I'm having you diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, weird. it's like I've done it a bunch you know this isn't like my first rodeo like right. I this is kind of something I do and I, I I've done it a bunch and yet every time feels like the first time every time feels like the most important performance of my life it's terrifying I think I think that it as it should be. I think that every performance should be or, or at least give you that sense of like those butterflies you know that I think that's a healthy nervousness. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's more, it's more of excitement, you know? I, well, that's what they say. They say that excitement and nerves is the kind same. of go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. It's this, they do the same thing in your body, but this isn't butterflies. This is like cicadas. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> you do push it. through and then within a minute or two, you're just like settled in. Like, does it, is that what it feels like you get kind of settled in once you've been up there for a little bit? Yeah. I mean, like, I don't think my I don't think my sphincter ever relaxes. So like I, I go up there and I, I do think after about the first two or three minutes, there is a, there, after you get through that opening number, yeah. like if you can get through the opening number, that's like your first triple axel. Yeah. <laughs> the, sh the, sh the, sh the, 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 the sphincter relaxes a bit. Yes. But it, it is like, it's like a long form skate. Well, you settled in so well at MMC 30 reunion. I mean, you were just like owning, owning the stage and oh, you can tell you're yes. like kind of taking your time. Right? Like, all right, <laughs> let me just milk this a little more. You know, <laughs> it was awesome. And I know you're going to do so great at the show mm -hmm. and just, you know, just trust that because you know that you are able to do it well and you've proven yourself and, and, you know, even if you mess up, so what? Right. Show goes well, now. On. I think that is the joy of being a little bit older. I, I obviously we all want perfection in our lives all the time. That is just not real. I mean, that's just, I don't know, maybe, maybe everybody doesn't want that, but it, it's something I, I've had to work on overcoming through the mm. years, but, but I'm letting myself off the hook more and more in terms mm -hmm. of perfection, because when I see shows, my favorite moment is, is kind of when things don't go as planned and mm. and the singer performer is real about what's going on and then you feel let in on something yes and so now i just sort of if i do screw something up which invariably i will i usually just call it out and go well <laughs> nobody knows the words to that song yet <laughs> fine fine it's totally fine I, I love I love those I moments. Love too. That. Exactly. I love that too. It just so yeah. right. vulnerable, you know? And you're honest. They're real people. They're re yes. real people. That's exactly. right. Cabaret artists are just like us. Exactly. <laughs> now, um, does Lee Lee go with you to when you your Lee, by the way, is your husband. Yes, who's walking through the kitchen right now. I I'd have him come over, but he's wearing the zoomiest zoom outfit ever. <laughs> he's got, he's got, come over here so they can come on see. Over, Lee. Come, come on, on over. Lee. Like, this is the epitome of a zoom outfit. I'll do the top half. Top. Oh, yes. Nice, Hi, nice. All oh, right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Went for checks in a big way today. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Thumbs up. Nice to see you, Lee, and your Zoom outfit. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Does he have meetings today? Do you have yes. meetings? <laughs> Important ones. I've got to go downstairs and have one in uh, six minutes. I mean, he is supporting our family in this outfit. <laughs> I love it. Trousers. You do you, Lee. That's right. Uh, it feels authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's all we want. Authenticity. Oh, there's oh a lot of that going on here. Lindsay, how did you meet? How did you and Lee meet? At a bar on a blind date. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I was, I was waiting tables in Santa Monica and I was lamenting to my, my boss one night about, you know, some wacky 
dates I had been on, some online <laughs> dates. And he was like, you have to meet my friend Lee. Like, what are you doing on Wednesday night? I said, well, I don't know. He's like, well, you have a date with Lee now. I said, don't you want to call Lee and make sure he's not, you know, <laughs> shagging anyone else? <laughs> um, and then we met and it was, it was the day after Valentine's Day. And we met at the Daily Pint in Santa Monica and we got married less than six months later. Oh my God. Wow. It was love at first pint. It, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did. It, it was a bit extreme. I mean, I think our family and friends were a little- A little bit shocked. Yeah, they were a little shocked. Um, and there were a few interventions like, uh -huh. are you sure? Are you uh -huh. sure? And my brother making the jokes of, well, you know, maybe Lee can join us for Christmas and tell us his last name, you know? Oh, like, dude. I, You know, looking back, it is crazy, <sighs> but it seems so appropriate for us at the time. But I think also That's after having those interesting dates prior to, you kind of already know what you're looking for, what you want, mm -hmm. you know, why yeah. waste any more time? <laughs> I agree. And, you know, I was 34. And I think when you're just a little bit older and wiser and like, you know, about yeah. a nice head of cauliflower. <laughs> you just know. <laughs> well, you had, you had told one joke at uh, the MMC 30. You said something about um, teeth in, in the English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's going to be in my show. I can't go oh. away. Just all that good stuff. Cut that out. I Okay, Cut that out. <laughs> no, it's okay. Because but I do say spoilers. I had to marry him because he's the only guy, the only Brit I've ever met with nice teeth. Like I had to marry him. Um, <laughs> that's so cheap, isn't it? It's such a cheap joke. How how we all met our husbands. Yes, Are we gonna yes, go I around the how you guys met? Let's 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 hear all these stories. <laughs> I, 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 I oh, you I want me to go next? Sure. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see, Zane and I met at a church retreat and, and he hates when I tell this story, but, uh, you know, I don't know. It's funny about the guys. They're always like, ah, don't, you know, don't tell that story, but I always get a kick out of it because it makes him kind of embarrassed. So, um, he was totally hitting on me at this church retreat, you know, and it was crazy though, because I was there with an acquaintance who was my roommate. The, the, it was a weekend long retreat. And she was my roommate at the time. And she comes in, she comes in, she was like, Oh my gosh, there's this guy. He's so cute. <gasps> blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, we're here for Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, we're not here to find anyone. Okay. So I just like, all right, cool, whatever. So next thing you know, on the last day, we have some kind of like a, um, an icebreaker type of thing within the the um, setting around trying to introduce everybody. You know, we're all a bunch of young people, right? And um, I turned around like that, and then he was right there, and we like locked eyes. <laughs> and like you I do thought, at the church retreat. I I what? <laughs> what? As, like you do at the church retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. We totally like we locked eyes and I was like, oh my gosh, that has to be who she's talking about yeah. because he just kind of fit the bill. And, and he came over, said hello. And I was just smitten, you know, by just this first chance meeting. Um, and then we started dating after that. We've now been married 22 years. So gosh. I'm glad he, I'm glad he hit on me. He asked me for my phone number and I said, yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, Miss Didi, what about you? How did you, how did you meet? Clifton? Well, I met my, I met my husband, Clifton, um, doing a little show called Miss Saigon. We were two of the youngest four in the whole group, the whole company. And uh, so while uh, everybody was, and, and, and of the four was Clifton, his best friend, Robert, me and David Cater. So the, we were all 19 years old uh, and mm. uh, everybody else was, you know, after rehearsal and after shows, 
they were going to the bars, they were going to the pubs and everything. And like, we were not allowed. And so we went to go play billiards or went to the movies and hung out and went to the diner. And we just became fast friends. You know, it was me and the three amigos, these uh-huh. guys, they were always looking after me and um, just making sure I got home okay. And and uh, and then um, he was in a relationship and I was busy falling in love with my leading man. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, years later, we just kept in touch. We were friends first and foremost, which I love That's cool. uh, about our relationship. But yeah, so it was, uh, it's what they call a showman's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a showman's, oh, yeah. um, which a lot of people say, you know, they are just, you know, showman's are discouraged a lot of times, you know, they say, you know, I you bet should, you shouldn't, you know, uh, yeah, eat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But uh, but he was in a relationship uh, when we were working together at first and I was, you know, busy, uh, you know, (laughs) being involved (laughs) here and there. I know I know her stories. Thank thank goodness there was there was no Instagram back then. Um, But yeah. uh, And then we finally found each other back in New York City. Um, He went to he went off to do Les Mis, uh, the touring company of Les Mis. And I went on to, to do uh, Saigon uh, in, uh, in, on Broadway. And, and then he came back to the company and I was leaving. And, and during that time, we just kind of reconnected and started dating. And, and then they say, you know, as they say, the rest is history. And mm-hmm. we've been married for, uh, for 18 years. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. How long did you guys both wait before you had kids? Ooh, good question. Well, Edie. we I, uh, we got married. We were 27. And then, so we were engaged for a year. We dated for about a year. We were engaged for a year. Uh, and then a year later, we had our first son. Wow. Yeah. So it was kind of like, you know. You it, did it, it just in happened. the right order. <laughs> right? Gosh, I kind of <laughs> waited a very long time. And, um, I just, I mean, I got married at 23 and oh, wow. during, I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah. 23. And he was 29. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, and of course everyone's like, what are you doing? You're only 23, you know, right. but when you meet the person that you love and you know, that that's, the one that you choose to be with for the rest of your life. You know, I mean, like you saying six months, you know, when you, when you choose, you know, so why wait? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. You know, in your guts. So we, you know, we, we got married and then um, around 30, I said, well, actually Zane was like, Hey, what are we thinking here? You know, cause I was still like, no, it's all about me. I gotta be on the, you know, it's just me, me. And, um, he said, we need to just kind of start thinking about it. You know, you're 30. And, and of course it took me like, I was like, uh, uh, like to actually make the decision to have kids. Um, cause you know, you always think about it, like in the back of your head, like, oh, of course I want to have kids, but until you do it, it's like, <gasps> am I ready? Right. So we, we, at 30 years old, we decided, okay, let's see what happens. And it wasn't until I was 37 that I was actually able to have my first child. Um, because unfortunately there were a lot of health issues and, and things that I wasn't aware of, you know, that you don't know until you actually start trying to have a child. And, um, so I ended up having to do IVF and, miracle, you know, total miracle. It gave us our first baby Coco, our first child. When she got to the age of, she might've been three and a half. We decided, okay, it's time to take the other embryos. And it didn't matter how many I had, I knew they were life. And so I was going to put them in no matter how many there were, um, placed them in. And then we got pregnant with Scout. I got pregnant with Scout. And it was such a miracle because, you know, you, you hear stories of like when, when they're frozen for so long, is it going to take, is it not? And so he took, 
and he he's here he's beautiful they're both beautiful <laughs> beautiful babies it makes, it makes me like emotional it's really Aww. no it's stunning it's stunning what what we're capable of and what the human body is capable of like it's, yeah it's it's you know not everyone not everyone is for it, you know, IVF. Um, there was a lot of prayer that, that went into it and a lot of just looking at all sides of it and trying to figure out, you know, what does this look like? How does this look like? And, and I also just, as I talked to my doctor, I made sure that it wasn't an aggressive, um, it, it wasn't super aggressive because I didn't want to end up with extra embryos you know, like 15 embryos. I, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the thing. So we took it very moderately and, um, gosh, by God's grace, like literally the amount of embryos that it just worked out. And, and that was scout, that was Coco. And, you know, here we are today, so it can work for you. You know, it's a long other show, you know, arduous process, but, but it's a miracle. Yeah. that I have my two babies. So mm-hmm. my long answer, it took us about probably 14 years. Wow, wow, wow. wow. To get to the babies, yeah. What yeah. about you, Lindsay? Um, a similar feeling, Mylin, in terms of, I always say, I always say in my show, I, I love kids. Like I, I'm a huge fan of their work. <laughs> but... <laughs> I wasn't sure I wanted to, to own one, you know what I mean? It's, a, it, it's just a thing. Like, you know, it's a commitment. It's, it's a responsibility. I mean, yes. Yeah. And then like you said, and I'm so glad you just gave voice to it. it it's not all about me anymore. And, mm. you know, you really like, i Yes. So I I knew I, I knew I didn't want to miss the experience of Mm -hmm. motherhood, but it took me a second to warm to the idea when I actually got pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, that feeling of shock, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're excited, obviously, but mostly you're just shocked. Yeah. Like mostly it's just looking at that stick going, Oh, (laughs) (laughs) what do you mean? I mean, it is, I just remember, I remember feeling a little, um, I don't even know what the word, horrified, like that I was going to be responsible for anyone's personality and, and put in charge of anyone's life. And then actually, um, so I, I should back up and say that Lee and I weren't trying, but we weren't preventing, you mm-hmm. know, that old trick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um <laughs> I got pregnant and then we went to, we went to see the, the first, um, ultrasound, uh, sonogram ultrasound. I, like, I don't know. Ultrasound. I I think I'm saying, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) sonogram for the ultrasound. Anyway, (laughs) and there was no baby. Um, and that was, that was our very first time kind of out to bat. Uh, we, you know, when you're in there and the, the technician goes, I'll just go get the doctor. I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, so wow. then the doctor came in and basically said, um, this is a blighted ovum, which I had no idea what that was, but basically your body builds the nest and no baby moves in. So oh, your body wow. thinks it's pregnant and you can see, like, we could see like the little, you know, sack on the screen, mm-hmm. but there was nothing in it. And so I ended up having to have a DNC and it was, you know, it was more traumatic on my mom and Lee's mom because they sort of knew like, you know, and Lee and I were just, we were, we were sad. We were confused. And I actually strangely felt a sense of relief after Mm. that because I felt like, well, okay, I'm off the hook. That was like a strange, you know, dress rehearsal. And And then the hormone thing, like the fallout from that experience was, was pretty shocking. Like what it did to my body for six months and kind of like the chemicals having to readjust. Wow. But in a way I was really kind of grateful for that experience because it readied my mind Mm -hmm. for the, for the idea that 
I could be someone's mom. Mm. And I, I really wasn't up for it at that moment, mm. but I was certainly more ready. A, I, I guess it was a year later, exactly one year later that I got pregnant with Owen. And that was a for real. And when we actually saw the heartbeat that first time, I just, Oh, <laughs> Oh, it was nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> so nice. Because I, you, just, you don't even realize how much, mm -hmm. how traumatic that loss was until mm -hmm. you actually then have that, you know, have the opportunity come around again. Oh. Um, that wasn't to say that there weren't many moments where I thought, oh shit, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? But um, we still have those moments. I was going to yeah. say, say that daily, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Owen has not put an ad on Craigslist for a new mother yet. So <laughs> we're doing, we're oh, doing okay. Wait till, wait till he's eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my anyway, God. It, it was a bit of a thing getting there, but then we mm -hmm. got there and, and we have this, we have this lovely kid who now I can't imagine life without him. Yeah. You know, I spent all these years going, Oh no, I never want to do that. I can't be responsible. I can't be on the hook for that. And then it's just kind of, you know, you can't imagine ever them not being in your life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it is, it is an interesting thing to think like, you know, being married for 22 years and imagining not having my children. Yeah. And I know that my husband and I would be wonderful, but it would be such a different, a different experience. And, you know, and, and, and some people choose not to have kids and that's okay. And I think if they know that they don't want to, that it's wise that they don't, you know? Um, but I think for me, it's been one of the most life-changing experiences and has really had like shown me how much, how selfish I am or, you know, and like you, when you become a mom, you, it's like you said, it's not about you anymore, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, Lindsay. That's mm -hmm. mm. sorry guys. I no, that's, no. I love that. This is, these are the things that people need to hear, you know, that things are not, they don't always go as planned. I know that Didi, you yeah. can share you know, your, your experiences. Did you know you wanted to have kids? Oh, I knew, I knew, I knew since I was very little, I loved, mm. I always had baby dolls growing up. My youngest uh, sister, she was always, I pretended she was my baby. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so I knew I wanted to be a mommy. Um, and when Clifton and I, after we got married, I, I think so, some people might think that, that we, uh, we rushed into it, um, but it just felt like the most natural thing mm -hmm. uh, for our relationship to, to grow. And I was, I was 30 when I had my first mm -hmm. child. And uh, after, after we had Caden, six years later and before that, we tried to have another child. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I got... I got to, um, you know, I got the, the little stick and we were just ecstatic. Um, we were still doing Wicked at the time. Uh, we were in San Francisco. And then a couple of visits later, I went to the doctor and, and uh, got, had the sonogram. And the doctor says, uh, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't see or hear, we don't hear a heartbeat. Mm. And I thought, oh no, what did I do? Yeah. I must have done something. Uh, in the show, I, I do a, I do a, a Pratt fall, you know, um, and I thought it was that fall that I did night after night oh, that wow. caused this miscarriage to happen. Mm -hmm. And I later, you know, I later found out that it had nothing to do with what I was doing. It was just mm -hmm. uh, a chromosome was missing or, you know, it was just not in God's plan. And uh, that was, that was hard uh, because, I learned then that miscarriage is is way more common than not. Sure. Um, mm. uh, 
but you know, we don't hear a lot about it. And so that's why maybe people think that it's so taboo to talk about maybe, but, um, it actually happens quite often. Mm. And, and so I thought, oh my gosh, but I didn't think that it was going to happen to me. But then six months later, we got pregnant with Bryson mm. and, uh, and it was just a better timing. We were planted in Los Angeles at that time. And then, uh, and then years later, we wanted to, to have another baby. Um, and, and twice after we had two mm. more miscarriages. Oh, oh, so, um, it was very similar to, to what you were speaking about, Lindsay, but like, it's kind of a loss that, uh, that is indescribable. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I also had to have a DNC, which um, was really painful in so many different ways, emotionally and physically. And, uh, and because, because I've never sp spoken out loud about it, whew, oh, um, yeah. indeed. it just brings back so, so many sad memories, but mm. um. I have to just look at my children now and just thank God that we have two mm -hmm. beautiful, healthy boys, um, naughty sometimes, but healthy, <laughs> beautiful boys and so uh. stinky sometimes, but just beautiful, healthy boys. And um, I'm so grateful that we have them. Thank you guys for being so honest about that. Cause I know that, that, it is kind of a, you know, keep it quiet kind of thing. And, and, you know, maybe more so from just the pain of it, but there's nothing to be ashamed, you know, and, and, you know, Didi, you had said that you thought maybe you had done something to have made that happen. And, you know, I've read things too, that say it's, it's usually not what a person does. It's mm -hmm. something chemically within the body. That's just not ready to, to be able to have the baby, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so just thank you guys for sharing those stories. Cause I know I'm sure a lot of women will be able to, um, to relate to that 